Hello, and thank you for viewing this precursor to the June 30th webcast, Contact Tracing, Special Considerations for Dementia. This pre-webinar session is designed to provide a short background primer on dementia and the public health response to cognitive impairment. This recording will cover the following objectives for those who are not already familiar with this topic. These include an overview of dementia, its symptom progression, and prevalence across the country. We will also look at dementia in the community, as well as how caregivers help support those living with Alzheimer's. Finally, today's session will quickly introduce the public health response that will be covered more in depth during the live webcast. Please know that this primer is supported by a cooperative agreement with the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, but the information presented today is solely the responsibility of the Alzheimer's Association. To begin, what is dementia? Dementia is an umbrella term for a set of symptoms characterized by the loss of cognitive function that is severe enough to interfere with daily life. Dementia is not a normal part of aging, but rather it is a chronic condition that some people develop often later in life. Several diseases and conditions cause dementia, among them Alzheimer's disease is the most common cause, while the second most common cause is vascular dementia. Alzheimer's is an irreversible progressive brain disease that slowly destroys memory and thinking skills and eventually the ability to carry out even simple tasks. Vascular dementia is caused by conditions that block or reduce blood flow to the brain, such as a stroke. Researchers increasingly believe a large number of dementia cases are mixed dementia, when a person has multiple types or multiple causes of dementia. Today, an estimated 5.8 million Americans are living with Alzheimer's. And over the next five years, every state in the U.S. is expected to see a rise in Alzheimer's prevalence. The West and Southwest are expected to see the largest percentage increases in people with Alzheimer's. You can see those denoted by the dark purple on the map. These expected increases will place further strain on healthcare systems, public health agencies, state Medicaid programs, service providers, and of course, will exact a heavy personal toll on those living with dementia, their families, and their communities. Dementia exists on a continuum, and what we see here is the life course perspective of someone who will eventually develop dementia. As you've already heard, dementia is not a normal part of aging, but we know that today and in the near future, the burden of dementia will continue to grow. The continuum begins with healthy cognitive functioning and progresses through to the pre-symptomatic stage. This is when changes in the brain associated with Alzheimer's begin to appear, but do not yet interfere with everyday life. As dementia progresses, mild cognitive impairment develops, which is when there is a slight but measurable decline in cognitive functioning. In the early stage, when dementia does begin to interfere with everyday life, people around them notice changes in personality and changes in memory. During the moderate stage, people with dementia have difficulty with everyday tasks, like calculating a tip or recalling the names of everyday objects. And finally, the severe stage compromises a person's independence. Dementia incapacitates communication, and individuals in the severe stage frequently become nonverbal, become bedbound, and may require around-the-clock care. As dementia progresses, people with the condition rely more and more on caregivers. We'll cover this more in just a moment, but as the COVID crisis evolves, public health professionals need to be thinking about both people living with dementia and their caregivers. While many people with dementia, especially in the severe stage, reside in nursing homes, the majority live in the community. We can see here that nearly 70% reside in the community, and this is why, as we will hear in the live webcast, contact tracing programs must especially consider cognitive impairment when developing their protocol and training personnel. Further, of that 70% who reside in the community, 26% of them live alone. Contact tracers may encounter additional challenges for these individuals, those people without in-home family members or caregivers who could provide additional context or information about potential exposure and recent contacts. Lastly, many of these people are able to continue living in the community because they have access to a network of caregivers, supports, and services. This is another special consideration that contact tracers must keep in mind should self-isolation or quarantine be necessary either for the individuals themselves or for their care caregivers. Regardless of where a person with dementia resides, caregivers are essential to their health and well-being. Caregivers may share a home with a person living with dementia or may provide support from a distance, either traveling to and from them or offering remote assistance. Unpaid caregivers frequently help with medical and personal care, such as medication management, or help showering and getting dressed. 
Caregivers are frequently a source of emotional support for those living with dementia, helping to minimize and redirect dangerous behaviors that include wandering away from home. The live webcast will further explore the necessary role that caregivers play in contact tracing, especially their ability to provide a more thorough medical history and a potentially more complete history of recent social interactions. For people living with Alzheimer's and dementia and their caregivers, the COVID-19 crisis is a particularly vulnerable time. As state and local public health agencies develop, launch, and refine their contact tracing programs, the unique vulnerabilities associated with dementia must be addressed. The CDC, Alzheimer's Association, and other Healthy Brain Initiative partners work together to elevate Alzheimer's and all dementia as an integral component of public health practice. The Healthy Brain Initiative Roadmap for State and Local Public Health calls for emergency preparedness and response to attend to these special needs. This includes providing critical information to them and assuring emergency preparedness workers have the knowledge and training they need to serve this population. Addressing these vulnerabilities will help protect the health of not only those living with dementia, but the many people they're in contact with. Even once conditions of the pandemic improve, we will need this kind of sustained public health action to continue. The June 30th webcast is tailored for professionals in public health agencies, aging services, and other essential workers. If you have a personal situation you're dealing with, you may find more useful information by going to alz.org slash COVID-19 help or by calling the Alzheimer's Association 24-7 helpline at 1-800-272-3900. Thank you for listening to this pre-webinar primer. Be sure to join us on June 3rd, 30th from 1.30 p.m. to 2 o'clock p.m. Eastern for the live webcast featuring expert speakers from CDC and the Alzheimer's Association. In the meantime, you may find more information at alz.org slash public health dash COVID-19. Thank you.